Oh boy, look at that. <laughs> you better slurp that <laughs> up. Oh, uh, for the uh, listeners at home, Rich poured what was left almost of his drink all over the table. On the table. Which and is, completely over his notes. And it's not the first time he's done that. No. Also. <laughs> I'm going to drink what's left in the oh, glass. he's going to cry. And yeah. You better slurp that off the table. <sighs> we'll shoot some video of that. That table's yeah. gross. Mm-hmm. Inspired by the adventures of our nurses, therapists, and techs, A Beer with Atlas is the only healthcare traveling, craft beer drinking podcast. Each week, we'll open a few beers, talk about the brewery and the style of beer, and then dive into some research curated specifically for each episode. In the end, we hope each one sounds like a conversation you'd have with your friends while enjoying a few cold ones. Everybody, so, welcome to another episode of Beer with Atlas. You have me, myself, Steve Seitner, in on this one because today we are doing a beer I am extremely excited about. One of one of my favorite breweries, Three Floyds out of Indiana, has pr- provided us, and maybe they didn't provide us. Well, we brought back. It. They made it and let us buy it, so they kind of provided it. Yeah. So right? Paul or Nat is is uh, responsible for this. He uh, he went through and went to the brewery and picked up some Three Floyds. He bootlegged it back for us. He did. God, what a good friend. Introduce, you introduced yourself. Steve Seitner. Steve Seitner. Atlas oh. Med Staff. And of course, Rich. And Brian. There we go. Can you tell he's excited? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, tis the season. I mean, the beer palettes change. I mean, the palettes don't change, but the options on the shelves do a little bit. And this is one of the best times of year for, for beer fanatics, right? So what do they call this? So this is number three in our Oktoberfest series. This is called Munsterfest. Oktoberfest <laughs> style lager from Three Floyds Brewing Company, Munsterfest. Munster, yep, Munster. that's nice. That's weird because that's where they're located in hmm. Munster. Well, I'm already obviously out of the loop. I thought it was Monsterfest. Monster. But. <laughs> well, it's so they are located at nine seven five zero zero Indiana Parkway in Munster, Indiana. So it is Munsterfest, and I would say widely considered a phenomenal brewery. So I got a little bit of research on that. Let me let me do my little background here. So Three Floyds was founded in 1996 by brothers Nick and Simon and their father Mike Floyd in Hammond, Indiana. In 2005, they moved to Munster, Indiana. This one, yes, Brian. Pause right there. Yes, sir. We need to open these beers or he's going to freak okay, out. Okay, yeah. Right. Just All right. All yeah, right. yeah, I'm on that page. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Good pass. There you go. All right, Rich and I'll share this bottle, and so Dolan just, can look at that one. There you go, sir. Steiner's <laughs> got. <laughs> so this is what I thought this was super interesting. Amongst other things with their brewery, like it is like rock and roll. Like it's not even rock and roll; it's metal. Heavy metal. Yeah, yeah it's metal. Heavy metal. I mean, look at this can, is Mecha Godzilla, right? Yeah, kind of. Yeah, ish. Crazy art. Their website's crazy. Um, they are open seven days a week. 11 a.m. to midnight. Yeah. I, I don't think we've ever come across a brewery that's open that, that much. Nope. At all. Uh, 2018, Three Floyds cracked the top 50 list of breweries in the country by sales volume, reaching the number 39 spot in craft brewery sales and 49 in overall brewery when sales. When was that? What year? 2018, just last okay. year. Um, Ooh, that smells good, by the way. It, Let me interrupt. It's delicious. <laughs> <laughs> he, already, he already got in after us. Hmm. Nice, yeah. That's my that's my favorite Oktoberfest so far. Gosh, that's smooth. That's so good. That is so easy. Mm. Yeah, it's like a real like like fest beer style. Like yeah. there's not a whole lot of gimmicks to it. Mm-mm. It is really straightforward. Hmm. Yeah, yeah it that's... doesn't. It doesn't have kind of that bite up front. No, nope. it's just real nice and smooth. A little sweet at the end. Hmm. Hmm. That's good. It is good. That might be my favorite. Are we wow. allowed to mention what our previous favorite? Sure, why were? not? Mm-hmm. Dude, Surly Fest. Surly Fest is good. That was okay. my previous, I think, before this. Mm. You know, I think of the October Fest styles. My probably my previous favorite was uh, Sierra Nevada's last year. I thought was that's good. Yeah, great. Mm. Like for mass produced. All right, sure. So yeah, mass produced. Yeah, this is. Man, yeah, if you're looking for like an introductory Oktoberfest beer, this would be it right here. 
Yeah. Do if we you have can pretzels find with mustard to dip in? We should. Oh boy, we should. That's or a good idea. Some kraut. Yeah. No, you're you're supposed to bring that in your guts. I guess we're supposed to. We didn't get ahead of, ahead of enough of that. No, I'm still new. I just didn't know what to expect. Signer, what I'm gonna so I'm gonna read a little bit here about their expansion. I, you, yeah. you may know this. Um, I want to know what Dark Lord Day 2019 is. Oh. Oh. Do, you, do you know what that is? Yeah, of course. Okay, so 2018, they unveiled plans to expand Three Floyds to a 57,000 square foot facility. 57,000 yeah. square feet. That's monstrous when I, when I went there this was about five years ago they were just getting ready to start on the new production facility okay which is what bumped them up it sounds like to last year mm-hmm. to make that and it's i think they're already needing to get bigger from what i'm understanding so so this is like the second expansion in the last five years yeah so i don't know up. if it's nationwide but i at least know like no. in the midwest they have an absolute cult following people chase around a lot oh, of their yeah. big hop beers you know the the alpha king mm-hmm. um zombie dust mm-hmm. i mean anywhere outside of their region they're they're highly sought after and mm-hmm. people are pretty willing to trade for quite a bit of what they especially offer especially for the Dark Lord. Mm-hmm. And Dark Lord's at the top of that, that pyramid for him. <laughs> so yeah. it says, construction is set to begin after Dark Lord Day on 2019. Hmm. So when was Dark Lord Day? What was that? Or what it's is their, that? It's basically their barrel-aged stout. Oh. It's kind of like Surly's Darkness. Mm-hmm. It has that sort of same, mm-hmm. uh, you stand in line, you pay mm-hmm. somebody, you try to get as many as you can sort of scenario. Sure. Really cool artwork. The Every artwork, year the artwork changes. Yeah. Yeah, that's one of the main things about it, and it's just a legendary stout. So, high these guys, ABV, yeah. something to share with some friends, sure. Or bombers, they make them big, yeah, like bomber, big, yeah, big, wax, okay. wax topped, I believe. Beautiful artwork. It's hard to get it here. I mean, you got to go there. It doesn't get. This isn't distributed to Nebraska no, or anything. No, so no, no, no. This is a you know somebody or you you made a trade like Aaron Daly or something mm-hmm. somewhere you had to come <laughs> across this you didn't just yep. go to IV and pick it up interesting no, no doubt my only experience with Three Floyds up to this point was disappointing I did not like Zombie Dust at all I and know. I know you guys do yeah I but, can only imagine you got a, a temperature <sighs> impact a Dolan can cut this bag. part out maybe we, we'll just edit that part out about Richard saying he doesn't like <laughs> Zombie <laughs> Dust. <laughs> Yeah, no, yeah, it's a fun. When I went there um, to the brewery, mm-hmm. it was an hour and a half wait to get in, okay. and that was Sunday. Um, it was raining and it was thirty nine degrees, and people were standing in line an hour and a half to get in and just buy a beer. They also had a line where you could buy to go and merchandise, which is what I was looking for. Yeah, that line was thirty minutes, what? so I chose that one. And my wife and my sister-in-law sat in the car in a parking lot while I stood in the rain for 30 <laughs> minutes to buy a T-shirt and, like, a bunch of beer to take home. So um, that, like you're saying, the hours, they need those hours because there's people there Just all the nonstop. Time. It's just... Yeah, the term cult following was made yeah. for a brewery like mm-hmm. this. Wow. Yeah. yeah. It's all about tattoos, beards, loud, heavy metal music. Metal music. And, and that's it. And that's, that's who's there. That's yep. the clientele. Um, and then, you know, folks like Seitner and I rolling in there if we can, but <laughs> sure. we don't exactly fit that mold, but that's, mm-hmm. that's like what they're, de- I mean, when you picture a craft brewer mm-hmm. in your mind, like the stereotypical one, that's who's in, that's who's in this place. Yeah. Everybody looks like that guy. Here's what I found about, cause I, we went, I mean, I can't remember the name of it. It was a smaller one, but it was a metal brewery, right? Mm-hmm. Those people are more inclusive than any other brewery. Like it's, it's just like, well, yeah. There's one in Lincoln that's very similar to this. Cosmic Eye. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which we need to do one of their beers, too. They have Metal Monday. When you wear a hardcore metal shirt in, you get like two bucks off your beers. Mm-hmm. Metal Monday. Genius. Mm-hmm. You gotta, you're got. you not wearing like a Jane's Addiction shirt. You're wearing, you could probably do that. You think so? Yeah, I mean, they they rocked hard. I guess. But you're you're talking more like Slayer and Magnet Iron Maiden and that sort and of stuff. Yeah, sh- Yeah. okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Hey, whatever. I got quiet. That's not it's, my world. <laughs> no, it's okay. <laughs> but yeah, so that that's a that's kind of a, I, don't, I wouldn't say trend, but that's a... A style of brewery, I guess, that's a hitting that client. There's an inclusiveness to these to breweries just in general that mm-hmm. I've that I've never experienced any place else really. It's really weird in the business world that for the most part they're pretty nice to each other and share and are talking up each other's products and I mean just Yep. Well and they're very supportive of their lo- of their communities for too. Sure. Right. Like more than most industries. Yes. Yeah, I agree. It's mm-hmm. kinda of, it's it's a weird little 
bubble that breweries you know i love are it in. though it's, it's super fun. cool just the collabs you know yeah that's uh yeah. three floyd's collabs with a lot of different people mm-hmm. don't they sell this at wrigley don't they sell i want to say three so floyd's beers they've expanded a little bit and they have like a craft section now yeah. but it's been i usually sit in the bleachers and so unfortunately in the bleachers you just have to drink old style i and think so, i think or they fortunately have it yeah, well, yeah. fortunately you're sure yeah right? you want that experience but i think also they right. have like zombie dust there even though you you don't like get it, it on tap, know. dude. It's got to be way better I, than what you had that I first would. time. I would. It was it came in a trade. It didn't have a date on it. So mm. well, four or five years later, I still get excited when I see it rolling. So I'm telling mm-hmm. you, it's good. Yeah. <laughs> There's a whole six pack of something back there. In addition to the uh, to the two Oktoberfests that we're drinking right now. By the way, five pack. There we go. <laughs> there we go. Somebody had sticky yeah. fingers. All right, like but it. what I what I also want to offer is I am now four or five drinks into this thing, and I'm still sticking with it. This yeah. is probably my new favorite of this style. It changes. And I think the excitement wore off, and now yeah. I'm just drinking it, and it's fantastic. Yeah. It changes a little bit. It gets a little sweeter, maybe, as it warms up. Could be. I don't know. Maybe. All I know is this is a kind of beer that you wish they made it year-round. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That's like part of the pub for when Oktoberfest hits is like you gotta right. hurry up and get these because they're not around yep. and this is such an easy drinker it's just full of flavor and yep. there's, yeah like Steve said earlier there's no gimmicks it's just Mm-mm. this is just it and right now at the time of recording probably not the time of your listening but mm-hmm. the time of recording I just came back from a week in Las Vegas and that place is a beer wasteland yeah. there is nothing and I drank Coors Light and yeah uh, sorry sorry so, for your this is delicious right now. You know? <laughs> like bringing you back. Like, yep. You're like that neglected flower oh. that just got a couple of drops of water and yes. now it's full blown oh. again. Yeah. <laughs> well, here it goes right here in the label. I mean, it even goes, you know, a Marzen style fest beer brewed with the finest German malt of barley, aromatic Bavarian noble hops, and traditional lager yeast. This rich multi lager is one of the few that remains true to the tradition of fest beers. Hmm. Nice. So I guess we do know a thing or two. Originally about a thing or two. To honor the marriage of Prince Ludwig in 1810, we hope you enjoy this fall offering. Prost. Threefloyds.com. On the packaging in German, mm-hmm. it says, "Es ist nicht normal." So it says it's not normal. This is not normal. I well, would agree. Neither are the two kaiju that are fighting on the front of the uh, of the package. Pretty there cool. Either. I mean, just look at the bottom. Even it's like old school nice. graffiti. Yeah, it is. They have good stuff. I have a, I still have my Three Floyd shirt, and it's the one I wear when I go to beer fest. Like it's, it gets compliments. It's the one that stands out. The one yeah. that yeah. three or four of this, three or four of that, but mm-hmm. nobody's ever. Yep, it's a pretty yeah. good one. Little like known, it. little known fact: Steve Seitner's uh, family nickname is Floyd. Does anybody huh. know this? Wow. Yeah, that is true. That is true. Hmm. Yeah. That is true. Your uncle is named Steve? Yeah, is I right? am named after my dad's uh, brother, Steve. So mm-hmm. in family situations, Steve Seitner can get to be a little confusing, mm-hmm. whether through email or conversation. So one day mm-hmm. he just looked at me and said, he's Steve and I'm Floyd. There you go. Where he got Floyd, I don't know, but it's one mm-hmm. of those things you can't give yourself a nickname. Yep. Yeah. And that thing stuck in one moment. Wow. There you go. And it has followed me around for 20 some years. So. Mm. so this beer fits him then. Yeah, it does. No wonder he's so excited. All right. Thanks for having me. Ever since, ever since you came up and you told me, you figured out mm-hmm. what you're, I can't wait for your research here. I can't wait to hear well, what you did. Well, I got scared because you started talking about it a little bit, and I was like, <laughs> oh, no. But then you stopped, so that's mm. good. Um, good. Uh, what town is the brewery in? Munster. Munster, Munster Indiana. Yeah. M-U-N-S-T-E-R. Yes, yes. Some people call it Munster, right? Munster. What do you think I'm going to talk about? The, the Monsters. Monsters. The Monsters. There we of go. Of course. I love this show. <laughs> All right. I, I was a kid of the 80s, right? Mm-hmm. So I grew up with uh, TV reruns, and Monsters was on rotation, it, right? It works. Scary, October, right? It's in the town. Abs- yeah. yeah. It's spooky stuff. It's basically Universal Monsters. This is the window into that to that uh, movie, I don't want to call it franchise, but world, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. It's uh, from like the 30s, right? So yes. uh, we're going to get into the Munsters. We're going to talk about that a little bit today awesome. while we finish. Well, some of us have already finished, but mm, yes. <laughs> while I still have a bunch. I still got a little bit here. So the Munsters, don't one of you seen the Munsters? You know about the Munsters? Uh, when I was really little. Okay. You know, well, so I didn't really watch it after like that. Last year. I'll give you a pass. Yeah, last year. 
So, so we got uh, Herman Monsters played by Fred Gwynn. Mm-hmm. He's also in a spooky movie called Pet Cemetery. Yes, remember that? Yeah. He's also in. Uh, he's the one that says something about the Utes. He's the two Utes. Yeah, that guy yes. and yes. my cousin Vinny. Yep. Uh, Yvonne De Carlo. She played Lily. She was a vampire. Mm-hmm. Uh, Herman Mon- Frankenstein monster. Yes. Then we had uh, Al Lewis. He was the grandpa. He was also mm-hmm. a vampire. Grandpa he was monster. Kind of like a scientist, uh, mad scientist mm-hmm. sort of dude. And then we had. Uh, Butch Patrick was the kid that played um, their son. He was like half wolf or werewolf and half vampire. See, I always wondered about that because so he was the child of vampire in Frankenstein, but right. then he was werewolf. Well, you know what? I don't know. Maybe the milkman was werewolf. Maybe. <laughs> but they Maybe. still needed to get a universal spooky monster in there, and yep. werewolf is that. Werewolf kid. Ding. And then they had, which was probably my favorite thing, was mm. the niece that lived with them. Okay. And she was just a normal person, and they felt so bad for her. Because she was just a human being, <laughs> and her name was Marilyn. Yeah. So Marilyn Munster, mm-hmm. she was um, two different actresses played her in the TV show. The show was on for two seasons, but 70 episodes. So their seasons were 35 episodes, Jeez. which would be like nowadays like 10 seasons of show. That's a lot. Much, right? Yeah. Um, usually you talk about or you hear about 100 episodes is like the magic number to get into syndication. Mm-hmm. Well, that didn't matter back then because there was hardly any TV shows and there was only like three channels. So yeah. 70 was enough to do it. It was created by the same people that made Leave it to Beaver. Okay. So the showrunner, we would use those terms nowadays. Yes. Uh, that was who ran the show was the same people from Leave it to Beaver. <laughs> Which seems super <laughs> weird, but okay. It, I'm still trying to figure out where we're going here. <laughs> it was, um, let's see. September 24th is when it premiered in 1964, mm-hmm. and the series was over by May 12th of 66. It ran on CBS. Two-ish years? Two That's years. It? Not even two years. So they did a lot of wow. a lot of work. Jeez. That's a... I, I would have guessed way more. Um, 1965, way more. it's nominated for Golden Globe for the best television series on TV. Okay. It had the, I think back then, the 18th... It was the 18th highest rated show. Oh boy, look at that. <laughs> you better slurp that. Up. Oh, uh, for the uh, listeners at home, Rich poured what was left almost of his drink all over the table. On the table. And is, completely over his notes. And it's not the first time he's done that. No. Also. <laughs> I'm going to drink what's left of my oh, glass. He's going to cry. Hey, yeah. You better slurp that off the table. <sighs> we'll shoot some video of that. That table's yeah. gross. Mm-hmm. Um,. They lived on 1313 Mockingbird Lane. That was their address. That's a good trivia kind of question, by right? the way. Yes. And let's see. Oh, okay. Uh, because it was Universal Monsters stuff, Universal Studios was the actual production company for the show. So that's how they could use the monsters. And all of the characters' costumes were, and basically makeup looks, were to look just like the movies. Um Herman's was exaggerated, so they kind of wanted him to be dumb, dopey look. Okay. So they made his face a little bit wider, and that was something that they worked hmm. on. And then they changed uh, the Lily's hair. She used to have like a Bride of Frankenstein gray streak down the side. Okay. And then as the season went on, they just changed her to all black hair. Oh. Uh, this show was going on at the same time as the Adams Family. Yes. So like you either liked the Adams Family mm. or you liked the Monsters. Sure. And I don't know. For me, I preferred the monsters. A little bit more funny. Just I always like monst- I always like the monsters. Yeah. Which, which one like had that. the dragon in the floor? That was the monsters. That right? was the monsters. Yeah. yeah. Um, and he the, would just blow fire up the thing, right? Yeah. <laughs> he would tell the kid goodbye when he goes to school. Yes. His name was yeah. like Spot or Spike, something like that. I think, Some, I think Spike is right. Yeah. Actually. Um, the uh, show was pitched in the mid '40s by an animator. Okay. That worked at, down in that area in Hollywood, and he wanted to make a show that was basically featuring Universal monsters, but make them funny, okay. like con- like early cartoons. Mm-hmm. But it didn't get off the ground until the '60s, and then they decided, well, instead of just doing this as an animated show, why don't we just live action it? So that's what they did. Oh, okay. Uh, let's see here. What else we got? Oh, the house. Yes. It's kind of iconic. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can see it in the background of shows. On Leave It to Beaver, so like the episode, you can see the house. Uh, there was a show in the 80s called Shirley. I never, I don't know what it is, but you can see the house there. It was um, used in Coach for some stuff. For real. And then they like remodeled the in, like the exterior of the house, because it's on the studio, right? Yeah. A lot. Yeah. They remodeled it, and they used it in Desperate Housewives. <laughs> so it was around for 50 years until wow. it got an update. Uh, the other thing I wrote down I wanted to research on a little bit was the car. 
like the monster the monster mobile, mobile. Right? yeah the coach yeah uh that's what it was called the monster coach on the show and then i think the license plate said dragula on it because it was like a mm. drag drag car mm-hmm. and it was built by george barris george barris he is the guy that made the first batmobile oh Basically, that's why it sounds any familiar. cool car that's on tv mm-hmm. he's the one that created it or designed it or built it gotcha it was 18 feet long cost 20 grand to make it and oh. it had a, a real coffin was what was like the on the chassis of the thing that yeah. they sat in and drove like that was a real coffin that they used sweet uh let's see some other stuff that was kind of interesting i wrote down they had an easter episode they showed it one time okay and it was between season one and season two it, it aired in april of 65 yeah and they went um this is a, a th- a thing that a lot of sitcoms do. They went on vacation. So like the Brady Bunch did that when they went to Hawaii. Yeah. So 10 years before that, the Munsters go to the West Coast. Well, they're kind of in the West Coast, but they go to this place called Marine Land, and they want to find a new pet for their son. Okay. That's the premise of the episode. It was only shown once, and then they thought it was lost forever. Nobody could find it. It was never... Nobody knew where it was. Just right. like disappeared. And then 97, somebody found a copy and gave it to this like museum in New York City. Oh, wow. So that's the only place you can find it. I couldn't find any pictures of it or anything. Hmm. Um, it got canceled in 66. It wasn't like it ran out of juice. It got mm-hmm. canceled. Um, and the year before it started, it had a 24.7 share. So we're talking a lot of people. A lot. It got canceled. It had a 30.7 share. What did you canceled for then? Because I don't, here's the reason. Okay. Sounds like. All right. Um, this show came out on ABC and yep. it was in color. Mm. And it was called Batman. Oh. And they were like, wait a minute. This is in color. Mm. I can watch color television. Mm-hmm. Even though I have a color television, the Monsters was shot in black and white. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're going to watch the Batman show. Mm. And that's what happened. Damn Adam West. I mean, if you could get right now, if you get like a 10% share, that's amazing. I'm You're talking like Monday Night Football. Yeah. 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 So this is a 30% share because there's only three channels. <laughs> and they got canceled for bad ratings. So that's tough to be that, right? But it's still amazing. We're still watching this show 56 oh, yeah, years yeah, later. About it. For, They're yeah. still doing movies. and Yeah. Speaking of, good segue. <laughs> 1973, they make an animated special. It's called The Mini Monsters. Okay. Then in the 80s, they did like a reboot, which I remember watching. It was like a Saturday morning show. It was live action. Okay. And the premise of it was basically Grandpa did a spell in the basement and accidentally put the whole family asleep. And they wake up like 30 years later, and they're in the 80s with 80s technology, and they have to be like, what? I Where remember this. At? Really? Yes. It's from 88 to 91, 72 episodes, so more than the actual Monsters. What? And it was on in the mornings. Because like, I think after for me, cartoons. that was like my introduction to it, and then I'd go to my grandma's, and then she'd have the old ones on, and we like kind of had a little connection over it. Yep. That's amazing. Different cast, but it was supposed to be the same family. They just like, you know, fell asleep Rip Winkle style, and then woke mm-hmm. up, and it was the 80s and, and early 90s, so wow. I had to figure out what to do with that. Yeah. Good job, Grandpa. Uh, in 2012, Pushing Daisies, you ever heard of that show? I have. The person that created that show was mm-hmm. like, you know what? I want to do a monster show, but I'm going to call it Mockingbird Lane. Yes. We're going to like a reboot, a re-spin it out. So they order the pilot, they get it shot, and then after the, they shoot it, the studio's like, you know what, we don't want to do a weekly show at this. We don't We don't even want to really show it. So they showed it once. It was like a Halloween special. Mm-hmm. And that's where it lived and died. So it was there. In 2017, Seth Meyers becomes attached to a new version, and he's going to set it in Brooklyn. I don't know if it's still happening, but that was the last I could find it was he optioned the Munsters to move to New York City. Interesting. As opposed to where they lived in basically L.A. It was a fake town that they lived in, but it was kind of like L.A. All right. One of the episodes I remember watching is Herman Munster tries out for the Dodgers baseball team when they first move out there. <laughs> and Leo DeRocher, like the manager, was in it and stuff. At, and Leo DeRocher yeah, was actually yeah, in it. Yeah, he was in it. Oh, man. And Herman hits the ball so hard. His baseball bat is like a tree. Sure. And he hits the ball, and it goes like five miles away or whatever. Right. And that's great. And I was thinking, oh, that's so funny as a kid. I, like, wow. That's hilarious. Herman's yeah. playing baseball with a yeah, bat. That makes sense. A tree, not just a wooden bat. Yep. Um, 2004, I thought this was interesting. The Wayans Brothers signed on <laughs> to do a reboot. And it was going to star Rose McGowan. She was going to be the wife. Huh? She was going to be Lily. I could see and this. They had it written, and they were about ready to shoot it. Mm-hmm. It never happened. The Aww. studio said, no thanks. 96, there was a TV movie made. It was a Christmas movie. Really? Yeah, Scary Little Christmas, it was called. And 
with Grandpa Lewis was in it, the okay. real guy. The oh, the like actual the original guy. Okay. Yeah. And then he, I think, accidentally somehow catches Santa Claus um, in his Christmas display. Okay. So he's trying to win the neighborhood display, much like the Charlie Brown Christmas thing. Sure. And he catches Santa and two of the elves on accident. <laughs> And then they have to figure out how they're going to deliver presents and all this junk. And yeah, so that was out one time in the 90s. So there's been like lots of stops and starts on this. Like a lot. Yeah. You'd think one of them would stick. You would think so. Maybe. But it didn't. So the other thing I found, there was a movie. I remember seeing this. in the, It was 1966. Mm-hmm. And they go to England. Um, kind of capitalize on Beatlemania. Mm-hmm. Um, but they went opposite, went to England. They inherited this um, mansion from a dead relative, which is something right out of a Scooby-Doo episode. Absolutely. And it was called Munster Manor, and their rich cousin or something died and left it to them. And they had to go there. And one of the other things I remember was there was a big car race, like an indie car race. Sure. And the Dragula car was there, and and Herman got to drive it and win the race. Is this where where Rob Zombie got the song title from, I assume? Uh, Probably. It's from the car, for sure, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, he's a big horror sort of guy sure. so mm-hmm. universal monsters and stuff right up his alley uh there was a comic book issues there's 16 issues of the comic that was mm-hmm. out there in the 60s there was a model kit that's very like amt i think is what it's called the model company AMT. Mm-hmm. they have a dragula car there was another model company i never heard of this one but it was called aurora models yes. mm-hmm. and they had a like a living room set with the characters in it too i guess huh. you could that's get or make um mattel made talking herman dolls so you could pull a string hmm Like, I know there was a Herman one. Yeah, Herman one was the main one, I think. Yep. Um, But I've seen him for, like, Pee Wee Herman, and Mm -hmm. I've seen him for Steve Urkel, I think. Urkel and Pee Wee both, yeah. Yeah. They had a Herman Monster one. Oh, interesting. Okay. There's a video game in 1989 that came out for. Like, Nintendo? NES? Original? No, Commodore. Commodore 64. Get out of here. I think this is a program, right? DOS, D O S. Yeah, yeah. And Atari. There was some sort of Atari thing. Ah. And they made that game, and it sucked. Probably like Atari 5600 at that point. Something like like that, that. yeah. Yeah. And then the next year, Atari made another game. It was called Midnight Mutants. And they had Grandpa Al Lewis, the guy that played Mm -hmm. Grandpa, in full character on the cover. But they didn't have an agreement with Universal to use his likeness (laughs) or say that he was, you know, Grandpa Monster. So they just called him Grandpa in the game. And that was around the time he was running. He was a politician. Like, he ran for office back then. I remember hearing about that. Kind of before he died. Yeah. Uh, And then the other thing... To tie it all back together, um, my favorite thing about the monsters, other than watching the show, uh, was there was a slot machine, a monster slot machine. Uh, like in casinos? Yes. Okay. And the, my very first gambling experience when I was 21, mm-hmm. came up to, to the Council Bluffs, probably had about 50 bucks in my pocket. Sure. And I spent probably four hours playing the monster slot machine <laughs> because it had this bonus, right, where um, if you got enough money... The screen would black out. It would come in like a black and white TV show. Mm-hmm. Herman Munster would stand up out of a couch, and he would say, I'm rich, I'm rich, I'm rich, and smash his hands on the coffee table and destroy the coffee table. Okay. And that was the bonus. And I thought that thing was so hilarious. It was right out of an episode. <laughs> it was so dumb. I would win like 50 cents, and I would yell at everybody, oh, check it out, check it out. And we would quote it. We would. Lo- I, would I videotaped it on my phone. We finally found it. One of the last times I was in Vegas, um, maybe four years ago, yeah. there was one casino that had two of the machines left because they just don't make those kind of slot machines anymore. Right. But you can very once in a while find it. Nice. And uh, that's what I think about the monsters. So I just oh, I love that thing. I, I, I do fall on the, on the, as much as I appreciate it, and I just saw this over the past weekend. Uh, Adam's family is doing they they they're, they're doing an uh, animated mm-hmm. Adam's family so they're yep. bringing that back again. Yeah. So yeah. It's interesting that the Adam's family movies hit like was like 89 yeah. 90 around that Tim Burton time frame. Mm-hmm. And now we've got a whole new generation of people, you know, that are mm-hmm. going to be seeing it again. And the monsters never had that. No. They never had that sort of big screen hmm. fame. I don't know. I'd like to see a Monsters movie. I'd If they rebooted it the right way, yeah, I'd watch it. Mm. I'd watch it if they did it the wrong way. Man, yeah, <laughs> you're right. <laughs> Me too. I would too. I did. I saw all the wrong mm-hmm. ways, it mm-hmm. looks like. Yeah. Yeah, so that's Munster. 
Indiana. Munster, Indiana. The Munsters. There we go. So if they'd never moved from Hammond, Indiana to Munster, we, 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 we wouldn't have that right We'd now. be doing Peter Gammon's baseball I trivia guess, or yeah. something. I don't know, <laughs> yeah. but... Yeah, I guess so. Look at the beer's just like soaking through my notes on it's this. It's amazing beer. how it has moved. I know it's just like mm-hmm. it's 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 definitely taking over. Ooh, a life of its own. I know, right? God. Talking about the monster. So sad I wasted all that. It was a, that was bad. Makes mine taste better though. I, can I tell guess. You that. Yeah, I hope so. Well, I know there's a couple more back there in the fridge, so I think we might be okay. If you Bye. drink it quicker, you don't spill it. That, that's <laughs> apparently clearly. <laughs> Leave it to the expert. By yours here, man. Yeah. Mm. Oh. So have you had any other Oktoberfests so far, uh, other than the ones we've been promoting? Have you made any purchases? Or um, I bought the new um, the Sierra Nevada one, but I haven't had it mm. yet. And then, gosh, there was one other one that I just bought the other day that I have not had yet either that is in my fridge. So. I, I've had the Sierra Nevada one, and it was really good. Okay. I know Infusion here locally just put out one. Okay. Um I just feel like there's one other one out there. I've had, I have not had this year's cross strain version yet. Yeah. The Bernstein beer, yeah, whatever that is. Yeah, yeah the I've Bernstein not, beer. Yep, haven't had that yet. Um, it's sad to say that we're almost we're like running out of time. Uh, yes, even on the real calendar. On the real calendar, yeah, yeah. It, it's Let alone going the recording quick. calendar. It is going, it is going real quick. So for the next episode, which is our last one, mm-hmm. this is where I hit you with the actual history the last one of all time uh, or just well, october just october fest yeah so we did four <laughs> october fest and so we're gonna go we're gonna go back and we're gonna do two traditional german german right is that right yep german so october well, the fest ones beers. that they have been mm-hmm. having there for hundreds of years yep there's only six breweries that are allowed quote unquote to make mm-hmm. beer for them and these are two of those six and most of them you've had before, like Polliner, mm-hmm. you've had, and Spotten. Spotten. We have a couple that we don't normally get, so we're going to bring those. I did while I was in Las Vegas. Um, there's a place called Beer Park, which is a Budweiser beer restaurant it's place. All right? and stuff. Yeah, it's it's right out front of Paris, the Paris Casino. Up on the roof, right? Up on the roof, right? Mm. We, you were, you and I were there right when they opened yep. for the first time. Um, I had I, they had Spotten in bottles. That's the only Oktoberfest they had was that in bottles. So mm. I had two of those while I was there. That sounds um, good. That Dolan, was the, that was the th- fanciest I had. What do you think of this one? Yeah, I it's my favorite Oktoberfest so far. Hmm. Mark it down. Yeah. There you go. Interesting. And you know, last episode how I felt. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah, we all kind of <laughs> felt that way. So yeah, that's just that's just how it went there. That's just the, the game you play. I guess. Yeah. yeah I'm looking sure. forward to next uh, week. Do we have any untapped information on this one, by we, the way? Let me, let me look that up. Because I know see. I haven't tapped this one in, and I'm going to. This one will... I'm going to guess... Are you on... Satan, are you on untapped? Did you do that? Nope. No. <laughs> wow. He's an, he's an I was doing it for a while. Yeah. Three Floyd. It's a whole thing, you know? I'm going to go four, but, five, five. Hmm. 4.55? That's, that's a, your rating that's or what you think is the that's rating? That's what I think the rating oh, is. Oh, boy. I bet it's like 4.1. Yeah. They, okay, so they have one called Dreadnought. It's a double IPA. I really want to try that. They have one that's called like Panzer Wolf. That's really good. I've had. God, they got some crazy stuff on here. I can't even find this. There's one that's one. called like Yumma Yumma or something. You ever Gumball had Head, Yum Yum. Yeah. Yeah, they have good stuff. Munster... Gosh darn! It it is buried in here. If it's here, Munster M U N S T E. Here we go. Here we go. Thirteen thousand check-ins. That's a lot. What'd you say? Four point five five. That's pretty high. Yeah, my personal feelings are different, but I would estimate the score is around four point one. What do you think? Um, Let's see. Four being a phenomenal score. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. I'm going to price is right it and I'm going to go 3.9. 3.75, oh. which I think is low. I think I, I feel think like it's that's low. low too. Yeah. Yeah. I I mean in in my head this is a 4 all day long. It it's good. It's four. real good. Yeah. I would yeah, this beer all day every day would be drinkable. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. like Brian said earlier, this is the beer I wish would be around year round. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's just one of those styles that I don't know. Just I don't know if it's easy. marketing, gimmicky, what it is, but boy, when it hits the shelves, it causes a stir. Here's the thing, though. Like, we've been through some of these beers before where they are kind of gimmicky or they, mm-hmm. it, it's the kind of the, the mystique. Sure. Right. Yeah. Or whatever. And it's just kind of meh. Yeah. Right. Or whatever. This kind of lives up to it. See, this is another one of those where if we didn't have the label mm-hmm. and we didn't know what it was and we were drinking it, mm-hmm. like, 
would we rate it the same? I think probably because it's just I so would. clean. I would. And it's it's sweet but not overly sweet. Mm-hmm. Um, very drinkable. I, I, I feel like because I know who it is, it doesn't really affect my score. No, no. Yeah, that's what I was saying initially. I am pretty sure my first drink, I was going to like it regardless mm-hmm. of what it was because of how long I've been waiting to have this one. Yeah. But after three, four, five drinks, I'm still saying this is an absolutely great beer. Yeah. <laughs> and I like on this, there's just a little nod to the traditional because this is very not traditional packaging, right? Right. But then we see the blue and white checkers down there on the bottom mm-hmm. and even in the letters. In the there, M. Yeah. yeah. In the letters of that. So even we're going to. Yeah, and their logo and stuff. It's... We're going to get into that next episode. Okay. But I just wanted to see because the other one we did, the, lock, the Lucky Bucket, had no blue and white on their no, packaging in none, nowhere. None. And this. To sneak it in a little bit, mm-hmm. just to give a little a little nod back to where it came mm-hmm. from, and yep. I, I like that. So huh. awesome, Seidner! I'm glad you joined us today, dude. Thanks for having me. This we, was fun. We end the episode uh, in, in in a very special way by yep. breaking out another one. Well, pretty much. We're not pretty going much. anywhere for a while. <laughs> Let's have another beer. I like it. Thank you for listening to A Beer with Atlas. Special thanks to our brand team for producing the show. Each episode of A Beer with Atlas is powered by Atlas Medstaff, an industry leader in travel healthcare staffing.